you know, the 3D, bringing TV in, natural interface, you're going to look at what we have today and think it's kind of a joke. Um, well, it's how we look at our old cell, cell bricks. Remember what those were like and what the laptop was at the beginning of this process. So that, that's all going to come, but is this really just about people at the bottom taking control, sharing information, exploding upwards, uh, that this is a structural transformation from the bottom, people sharing information, getting hold of it, or is there, are there another set of opportunities? Mark Parker from Nike, tell us. Well, I think it's uh, enabling a fundamental shift in power, really. Uh, this whole Web 2.0, don't ask me to define it, because I think you've got better qualified people here to do that, probably in the audience as well. But the, uh, the, what I see is a fundamental shift in power that really is giving the power to the, to the consumer, to, to people. And that is to engage, to connect, to create, <clears throat> and do it on a scale that we've never seen before. And I think that's going to have so much ripple effect or so much uh, change in ways we don't even know. Yeah, but you're not going to have people making sneakers, right? So, so, so what's the implication for Nike? Well, we, in fact, we do have people making sneakers. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fairly large and very fast-growing business for Nike. We have, uh, I don't want to get into an advertisement, but we have a Nike, what we call Nike ID, which is a, a site where you can go and customize product that is specific to you, color, materials, uh, eventually be more performance benefits as well, but really creating product that's unique to you and what you need. So it's a, collab a way to collaborate with your customers and help them co-create with you. Yes, when you, when you uh, create products like this and experiences, you also, uh, and sometimes we don't even know it, but you create communities, people that share a passion around those products and experiences, and then they start to connect. And then they jump in, in, in the party and start to uh, create and make it into something that we can't even imagine. Commissioner Reddy, uh, why are you here? I mean, does the EU have any interest in this? I, I, I'm not quite sure I understand. <laughs> Well, we don't got a lot of interest in this because uh, we in the EU are now 500 uh, million people. And I think a big part of uh, those are going to be uh, in the communities. So we really di did get an interest in this. But if you ask me as a politician, yes. what is my interest in this? Well, let me first state a principle. I'm very happy to hear that from uh, Catherine and from Chad that the uh, Internet finally is going back to people. And there is where it should stay. So my principle is government's hand of the Internet. That is the first big principle. <clears throat> now, uh, having said that, uh, there are problems which need to be solved. So I see politicians... For uh, for example, uh, in the networks, because in order to enable all this, we need the fast networks, we need them to be symmetric, and we need them to be open. Openness, I think, is at the heart of it. So we have, as politicians, to be the enablers in order the networks to exist. And uh, Bill Gates is very right when he says we have not solved the problems of the digital rights, but this is going to be crucial in order uh, this uh, whole uh, new system of enabling people uh, to create their their own content or to utilize content somebody else has created. So we have all the rules in place for the old media. And we have not yet, because we are overwhelmed by what is happening, the new rules. The new rules must lift the barriers uh, on IPR and on content production. So I'm thinking, for instance, on the problems we have of the territorialization of rights. We have to get rid of this because uh, rights now are linked to national territory and we have to license for a virtual space uh, very soon. And then uh, these many right holders for one content, well, you cannot go global uh, with this. You are blocked all the time. So even if I say governments hands off of the internet. Governments have to uh, be the enabler so that these new communities can really function. Dennis, you, it, it's just uh, two, two quick points. Understand that when you're at Forbes magazine, the unofficial slogan there is business good, government bad. So I'm happy to hear the commissioner say that she believes government should keep its hands off the internet. That's wonderful. But I just wanted to check on something. Didn't 
the Europeans a year ago here launch an effort to create their own search engine to compete against Google. And I'm wondering how that effort is going and what's your market share? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, the Europeans didn't uh, try to build up something to be a uh, competition to Google. That is foolish. The Europeans uh, tried to work on a multilingual search engine and on a portal in order to leave the European people uh, get, uh, get access to this very huge richness we have. For instance, uh, in our libraries, for instance, in our film archives, uh, for instance, in our museums and in the underground of the museums. We would like all our European people to get access to this and for this we need a multicultural and multilingual, very important, the multilinguism. Yes. I would not like everything to happen in a, a, a kitchen English, but we right. have uh, the wealth of uh, the linguistic uh, uh, diversity which we have also to cherry. It, it's a wonderful goal. It just seems like there are plenty of companies that could find a great profit motive in creating that and when we can find profit motive in doing good things then a lot more good things will will be done and then just a second quick point Peter um, I have been receiving PR pitches on web 2.0 for close to four years now and I have never before understood uh, what it is and I want to say that based on what I've heard today I'm even more confused so but what you're confused at a higher level but web point two, uh, what web point two oh really is is it's the next buzz phrase, it's the next sales slogan, it's wow. the next thing we're going to use to sell technology to businesses and to people. It's, we started with mainframes and with central control, then we took away a little bit with mini computers, then PCs and it was power to people, then networking them back together to get control, then dis distributed processing, then client server and now web 2.0. So what I want to know though, all along customers blindly went along bought everything, but the customers we talk to are more resistant than ever before. So for the Nike gentleman, Mr. Parker, are you as willing to believe in the sales pitch today as you were five years ago? Absolutely. No, I think at Nike we are embracing this change. And drinking the Kool-Aid. Drinking the Kool-Aid, I guess you could say that. It would uh, be wonderful, I'm sure, but okay, thank you. So, Chad, <laughs> look, is this more than just simply about people uploading videos of themselves making idiots of themselves at parties, or is there something really quite profound going on here about people engaging the world in a new way? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's changing the world because it's giving everyone a voice. Um, and we've been able to be successful because we've built a platform to make that possible. And we weren't filtering, uh, you know, what was entertaining. Uh, for our audience. We were allowing the audience to define what was entertaining to them. So by having a platform where, where videos can come in, by them viewing, interacting with these videos, they'll rise to the top. Well, now, one of the people we couldn't put on the panel just for numbers was Jimmy Wales, who's here. Jimmy, are you in the hall? No. Well, Jimmy uh, started something called Wikipedia. Um, and now here's something that, you know, I, I'm an old Britannica junkie. Uh, I, I still have my 1974 edition, Macropedia, Micropedia in the basement, I still love it. But my son, he doesn't know from the Macropedia or the Britannica, it's Wikipedia. And I use Wikipedia all the time. Wikipedia is changing the world. It's the universal distribution of knowledge accessible to everybody from the bottom up. But it's an instantaneously, constantly created source of knowledge. Uh, so I'm speaking here for, for Jimmy, but I seem to think that this is another dimension of this when you say voice, and it's the voice of knowledge and the distribution of knowledge, enabling people to do new things. But, so, this is also business. Why isn't this going to be bus 2.0? You know, what, what, last year we put in $800 million of, 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 of venture capital into this. We've got another boom going here. Are we going to see that $800 million go a-glimmering? Or is an awful lot of money going to be made? Bill. Well, where was there a bust? Uh, every year the number of PC sold, sold has increased substantially. Every year the number of internet users has increased substantially. Every year the amount of traffic, the richness of the traffic has increased. Now there's this other kind of uh, uh, manic depressive off on the side here who's valuing these things. And he got a little, <laughs> a little bit manic uh, there in 2001. In fact, he, was, he didn't, hadn't taken his medicine at all. Uh, <laughs> 